So why don't we go ahead and start with a demonstration. So on this laptop, we can see on my screen I'm running a continuous ping test at a stable 13 milliseconds, and I have a speed test. I'll go ahead and perform a speed test. This is currently utilizing the two 100 meg connections. So we can see the speed test is speed testing at 200 megabits per second, and we have no fluctuation in latency. Now we'll go ahead and simulate a link loss by pulling one of our connections. So we can see not a single packet was dropped, latency stayed the same, and if we perform another speed test, now we have 100 megabit. Now we'll, we'll simulate a worst case scenario, which is a loss of both connections, and we can see now not a single packet was lost, but our latency increased to the latency of the cellular network because that's what we're now operating on. And if we perform another speed test, we will see we're now down to about 19 megabit, which is the current capability of this modem in this building. As the links come back up, the speed will automatically increase, the links will automatically be measured for jitter, latency, and loss, and they will be re-added to the bond. You can see here in the management portal, while I was doing those tests, these links were showing that they were dropping. We were able to see which links dropped, and we can see now this blue circle indicates that that link is currently being tested and has now been added back into the bond. At all times in the management portal, we can see the current throughput on our connections, the status of our connections, and down below we can see some metrics on the individual circuits, such as the current traffic, the current latency, the current uh, traffic per leg, the current latency per leg, packet loss per leg. So this gives us a really deep understanding of the quality of the different circuits that we're adding to our SD-WAN device and lets us hold our carriers accountable and know that the links we have are of good quality. If they ever have issues though, the bonding device is automatically calculating and removing them or lowering their speed uh, to compensate for the issue. I'll give you a little bit more information on some of the features that we can see within the bonding portal. So if you're a distributed enter enterprise or a company who now has many workers working from home, it's really important to have control over the user's bandwidth and to be able to provide a connection that's both stable and reliable and has the metrics that are needed for them to be successful working from home. The bonder itself can have an integrated cellular modem or be connected to an external modem. So if we imagine a world where we have home users who have you know, broadband connections, uh, small DSL cable, we can augment those with secondary connections that the company is paying for, or LTE to increase the reliability and separate the corporate network from the private network to ensure that we don't have any liability associated with viruses and bad things on their network. So if we take a look at the portal, we can see this gives us a really nice top level view of this independent single circuit. If we had 100 users or 100 retail sites, we would see all of those sites listed within this portal. We can see at a glance the circuits that are up, which aggregator we're connected to, the aggregators or the appliance within the ITEL cores, which we have in every province across Canada and a ring throughout the US, the current status of the site, the current connected IP. If we drill in, we can see a little bit more information. We can see the primary aggregator. We're able to have secondary and tertiary aggregator points, so this means that if uh, in the ITEL core there's a failure, automatically we're able to fail back to a second point. And we also have the capability to deploy the aggregators within a corporate network. So if you're an enterprise uh, organization who has your own data centers, we can actually put these concentrator aggregators in your data centers and have all your users directly meshed to your data center. It's then creating uh, a full mesh L3 VPN for you where you can pass private subnets, um, you can do and handle your own routing and even create full mesh bonder to bonder, bonder to data center.